layout. Yep. Oh, hey, Pretzel says good luck. Thank you, Pretzel. So, hey, count me down and we can start the run. Alright, brilliant. Um, okay. So, without any ado, let's get this show on the road in three, two, one, go. Thank you all for coming to this run. My name is Bearded Musker, and this is Out There Somewhere, which is a little 2D platformer game. Uh, it's kind of like 2D port for portal. You're going to see here I've got this teleport gun, um, and that works pretty simply. In all collectibles, I'm going to be getting some things called abandoned cores to upgrade my spaceship, as well as some ancient alien artifacts to give myself some hit points on my journey to find my arch nemesis quickly. Uh, the physics in this game are really simple and addictive, and the mechanics are really nice, making things fourth dimensionally. But our abuses are kind of tough to describe, and we'll use a bunch of them in this next room here. So I'm going to kind of try and do these tricks first and explain them after. Just give me a couple seconds here. Got to leapfrog this barrier. And then pick up this first core. This is what a core looks like. Alright, remember this screen now. Ah, come on, game. Hey, we got that the first try. Alright, I'm actually on top of the game world now. And I'm not going to attempt a warp glitch, which would actually have me skip a screen of this nothingness on this first pass. I have to do it all again, so chat, let me know if you want to see me try. It's a potential 5 second gain, a potential 25 second loss if I go the wrong direction. Uh, basically what happens is, in this game, conservation of momentum is applied. If you're rising when you re-teleport, when you respawn, uh, you're still rising. If you're falling, you're still falling. If you're on the ground, you're still on the ground. Luckily, the game delays um, applying its game physics for a few frames after you respawn. So let's say you're standing on solid ground and you spawn on a wall that's like over a lava pit. You have a couple frames to jump so you don't fall to your feet. Uh, we're going out of bounds again here, by the way. Um, and so we abuse that to extend our jump height and sometimes to get air jumps off the of walls. And so I put two of those together uh, to leave the game world. So what just happened was I actually skipped the dialogue box after picking up that alien artifact, which is what gives you hearts. Notice I now have two hearts. Um, the game runs for a few frames after you pick up items. You're going to see it here, and then dialogue appears. So anytime you can leave the screen after getting an item, you have two free seconds of save. So we're in this sort of junkyard just west of the alien city, which is our first main mission point. We're trying to pick up a weapon because the second half of the game has lots of fights and also it's all collectibles. So um, I have to pick it up. Then we're going to be doing some save warping because there's some metagaming built into the route. You can't actually 100% this game without save warping or death warping. Um, there's a few bottleneck points early on with these computer kiosk checkpoints, and so I just exit without saving because the game auto saves for me when I touch items. But now I'm heading back to the opening screen of the game to get um, an abandoned core I would otherwise miss. So um, we're heading back, and then there'll be another little save warp. This opening five minutes is kind of brutal and actually has a few points uh, because of the backtracking that can render this unrunnable. Luckily, I haven't killed the run just yet, but now I gotta go out of bounds again, um, and hopefully I can do this. Oh, you know what? Heck with it. I'm gonna try for the warp glitch this time. It looks like nothing, and based on my reaction, it'll tell if I get it or not. So, we failed the out of bounds this time, but that can happen. Even in my PB attempts, I can take second try. I'm gonna try and pause buffer this here right on the edge of the screen as I transition, and was that enough? Nope. Okay, this time I got it. So, you notice last time I landed with a tile of padding, this time I'm on the bottom of the screen. Um, I just skipped the screen, saving five seconds in game time. Unfortunately, by the time I did it, it was only about a second in real time, and I actually just screwed up colossally here. Uh, this happened the last time I ran this category in a marathon. just got a little nervous on this window. I was trying a trick shot, and I should have played it safe, and instead had to climb back up to get this alien heart. All right, we're going to set up another save warp here on our way to the upgraded Gauss gun. So we're backtracking through what we were supposed to see our first pass through this game, but we skipped it by going out of bounds. Um, and so yeah, this game, you're never really meant to be on the very edge of the screens. The developers were very careful about that. They actually made this in Adobe Air, if you can believe that. Super easy to overwhelm the core game, and essentially when you call new screens, it works basically like XML addresses. And so if you're ever on four corners at once, um, any inputs you give can very easily throw the address it calls off by one um, integer. And so we've learned that you can manipulate that on those four corner transitions. There's like three opportunities in the game. If you're pressing right, it ejects you a screen to the left, and vice versa. So the pause buffer is to make sure I know for a fact that as that um, screen transition occurs, I'm inputting the correct direction. Even knowing that, I sometimes still screw it up, and lately I've been getting ejected the wrong direction a ton. Uh, so I'm glad I only went for it once. And so now we're making a second pass through to get the collectibles we missed the first time. Uh, as far as I know, there's really no way to do all the collectibles in a single pass, but the route that we've come up with is pretty efficient. I just want to give some community shoutouts here because the runner, this is how my mind works, is the reason for a lot of the swaggy things we do. 
So anytime I get some kind of neat shot while we're waiting for the dialogue to appear, um, almost all of those have been invented by this is how my mind works. Like, check this out. So I fire the return shot, and I'm actually able to clear half the screen while we're waiting for the dialogue. Totally a mind works invention. Um, this one that I'm about to do to pick up the, I think, sixth abandoned core now, I lose count easily. Um, this I theorized about, Mindworks was the first to get it. Uh, I played on a slow-moving laptop for a while, and so I just didn't have enough frames to actually execute that trick. But then Mindworks was playing around with it and got it like first try, and he's like, dude, why is this even hard? Um, he's incredible, he's like an encyclopedia, and also completely broke open our any percent category. So now we're going to climb over the jump yard again. You see the game clearly wants you to leave to the right. The problem is that sends you to some caves where you talk to these tree guys. I mean, they're kind of funny and all, but there's no collectibles down there, so there's never a reason to go. Um, we skipped most of the exposition by going out of bounds, so I'll talk about these colored light beams. The red ones cancel your shots, so in a speedrun you never ever want to hit them. The blue ones act like walls that Yuri can go through, but his telebeam cannot, so they're very helpful in many places. Uh, the little yellow slug guys in the cities are our friends, they're not enemies, and we talk to a couple of them later in the run. Uh, you might have seen some gray slime guys that I just kind of ignored. Uh, they are enemies. Here I'm going to try to death warp. I'm going to touch an item and die right away. Oh, just missed it. That's a very narrow frame window. So you see I had two potential seconds to save there. All right, so now we're heading to kind of the middle phase of the game where it becomes a lot more about how nimbly um, I can platform and I actually have to start watching out for these enemies. Uh, there's no collectibles in this next cave sequence. If you happen to have seen me run any percent in-game time, which I did last week for Distant Star Cares, um, this portion of the run's gonna look identical. And I just nearly messed up a shot there by getting greedy with the timing. So you just saw the green beams, which are the third kind. They lift your beam, or they lift your telegun to the top before respawning you, and they can be abused. I could have, in theory, jumped around that brown block to skip part of the puzzle, but we have a much more reliable skip anyway. Uh, green beam jump, you're gonna see two of them late in the run. They used to be the most sophisticated trick in this game, and we're, we thought kind of like uh, they were our blue house skip, how wrong we were. And uh, I just messed up some basic platforming, please forgive me. And climb. Alright, so now we're out of the caves and into what I consider the scariest part of the run from a marathon standpoint. None of the tech is that severe and there aren't any major skips, but I'm about to go about 35 seconds without seeing a checkpoint, so if I do something careless and die, I might have to repeat this whole sequence again. So it's just a matter of can I avoid silly mistakes. Alright, so we're going to be uh, using these beams a lot to climb. Anytime you see me sort of stutter or like circle around, um, I'm not wasting time. I'm making sure that I'm a tile away from whatever I want to teleport off. So you saw me double back there. The game rejects your shot if you're less than a tile away. Alright, we've climbed down the outside of this tower to pick up the ninth of 11 cores. It doesn't save time to jump off the ledge like I'm about to unless you hit the swag shot that I'm going for. So let's hope I get it. And kaboom. Got it. Now that block could have killed me, so that could have been a really dumb risk to take. I'm going to try a new save warp strat that's not really in my arsenal yet, so I hope I don't mess this up. Uh, we're in sort of the next phase of the game. Nope, shouldn't have gone for it. I just heard a blast outside. I hope that's just fireworks. All right, going down, and boom, boom. Okay, that time we set it up, but we didn't get the time game. Um, so you notice these prison cages? These poor little slug guys have been enslaved by Grigori, which is kind of why we're going after him. But some of them stayed in his employee. You notice the guy wearing a Samus helmet at the top of the screen here. Um, he is going to unlock some gates for us. So we're just, just going to chit-chat with him. And now I didn't die good, so i got to sort of wait here and take the hits. Uh, that was kind of an inefficient section. But now it's the faster way out to this. You notice on the rightmost tile there is kind of an open gate there. We needed him to open that. Now we're in the second security sector. There's a lot of fun-looking trick shots throughout this portion of the game that are a lot easier than they look. Our background is tile-sized, which is perfectly convenient, and you notice gravity does not apply to the telegun. Um, my screen just completely lagged for a second there. That almost never happens. Uh, so any of these tough looking shots, all I have to do is make sure that I'm at the right height. doesn't matter where I am left to right, and then I've got them. Uh, yeah, so something's running in the background that my game doesn't like, and uh, it happened last week too. It's been happening an awful lot. I just got a new computer that sometimes does some things. So here's the second of the three alien guards we have to talk to, but we actually skipped the third one late in the run. A fun anecdote about this room is I death warp out of it. I used to stream from a laptop, as I said, and it used to lag the heck in that room and spawn the slime guy um, one tile too far to the right. That would make it so that I couldn't actually run under the red beams in time, and it would actually mean that he got munched. You know, he met a grisly demise that he didn't ask for. Um, setting up a save warp here before I get the last collectible. I actually very nearly forgot to get this. Oh, come on. We're trying to dialogue skip again. That time we got it. So we didn't have to wait for the dialogue uh, telling us that we got the core. 
I hope I didn't forget any cores this time around. I'm used to having to manually split at certain points, and my muscle memory tells me when I'm not hitting splits that I'm doing any percent in-game time. Uh, so I should have 11. When I talk to this trader here, he should be telling me something about nice doing business with him. I actually have to save an exit here, which is um, the only time in the run that I have to do this. The game auto saves when you touch items, but for some reason it doesn't when you talk to him. So I saved and set up my save warp there, so I'm already halfway out of the room. And now we're going to see um, a wider cone of fire when I fight the final boss. Alright, so it doesn't matter if I did hit from that guy, so I just kind of run through him. We got some... Uh, enemy fights here. You see that nice high fire rate because I picked up the upgraded gun uh, makes this last portion really a breeze. That was a minor implementation of green beam jump. I actually deliberately bonked at the top of the beam, but it gave me a couple pixels of extra clearance so that I didn't have to do some extra platforming to clear that lava lake. These ghost guys actually swallow my telegun shot unlike every other enemy in the game, so I gotta be careful around him. Play some jump rope damage boost. I've been failing that a lot, so I'm pretty happy that I got it in the run. Um, Alright, so now this climb, not so hard, is not aptly named. Here's the most adequate uh, demonstration of green beam jump if I can get it, and this one is really finicky. But I can get it up to like 11th try and still save time on it. Normally you'd have to clear the screen like three times, but there I just jump around that block so I don't have to deal with it. Alright, so we're at Amazing Horseshoe now. Uh, this room is pretty self-explanatory, just gonna take some damage from this brute and sneak behind him. Now I'm gonna think fourth dimensional and get myself in a ground state here for two frames so that I can jump off that shot there. We just skipped the third alien card. I'm not feeling risky, so I'm not gonna try and do some loot jumps off of this wall. This is kind of an homage to the Metroid screw attack. You just clear the wall. You got nothing between you. You have to keep yourself afloat with these shots. Check out Gregory's sprite. This is the man. He's got a hole in his stomach. I just think that's awesome. We're gonna fight him twice now. Once on foot, once in space. With our full upgrades, both are kind of a joke. However, the on-foot boss fight, if you're not knowing what to expect, is kind of dastardly, and it's kind of, it's really slick, actually. Um, he takes three hits, then he warps to the other wall. He has a total of 19 hit points, so now he's dead. Uh, sorry. But he actually has these really neat attack cycles if you let him get into them. Alright, we pick up the light orb, which is the last thing I need. Now the game's gonna come full circle, and we're gonna see the very first screen of the game for like three seconds. Get ready on time, because, uh, he goes down quick. Hold your adventures, please. Alright. And time. 11.53. Alright, sub-12, I can take it definitely gone worse before. Alright. Gregory was defeated and pieces returned to planet unknown. Mother Planet is also grateful for it will be a long time until Gregory attacks again. Everyone is waiting to greet Yuri as their hero once more. But Yuri can't go back home. Not yet. Guys, do you see it? He's, he's setting up. He's gonna say the title of the game. He's gonna do it. For Gregory still. Alright, say it with me. Out there somewhere. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Shoutouts to El Nacho before me. Shout out to this whole marathon. Shout out to Succinct for putting it all together. Get some sleep when this is done, dude. Um, Definitely. We'll roll the credits until I'm out of the server. Thank you all. This was a blast. You may now breathe. <sighs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I talked fast. This game kind of demands it sometimes, man. That was really good for what it was worth, but fuck me, dude. Breathe. Holy. I don't believe in breathing. I'm I'm <laughs> an uh I'm an automaton. I don't need oxygen. Puny human. Uh, okay. I need breathing and I need sleep. <laughs> but I cannot allow either of these things at the moment. Okay, I'm gonna cut to an intermission so I can get All the right. other guy set up.